Welcome to Coffee from the Block from the House of Blockchain in Liechtenstein. My guest today is Dr. Otto Frommelt. He is the director of the National Road Office in Liechtenstein. It's a big pleasure to have you here, Otto. Thanks for coming. Great uh, pleasure for me as well. Thank you for the invitation. You are the, uh, you're the director of the National Road Office in Liechtenstein. But as I know, you also deal a lot with blockchain. How come? Well, it is quite simple. I have seen in 2018 that Liechtenstein has been in the development for a new blockchain law. And then it became quite concrete in 2019 and uh, 2020 it was introduced. So I uh, saw, well, what are here the opportunities for a national road office and for government? And of course, when I saw the enormous opportunities, I, I thought I have to go into this and, and, and see what is good for instance, for, for, for government and for my job. I learned from a recent presentation you gave that it is a part of the digital strategy of the Liechtenstein government. But what are the benefits for me as an individual? Like you as a national road office, um, you, you're using blockchain, but what is like the benefit for me as a standard citizen of Liechtenstein? What can I expect? Right. First and foremost, we are in the development of going to use blockchain. We are not yet there, but we see, of course, the full potential of a digital ecosystem, and that is what we would like to do. The benefit for you as a, as a customer are manifold. For instance, if you want to register a car, you can do it in the blockchain, and you don't have to go to insurance, and you don't have, for instance, to come to the road office. You, it all can be done within the blockchain. And it then continues, for instance, if you want to buy or, or sell the car, you can also do it in the blockchain. I know that when I want to register a car today, I first have to call my insurance company. They have to then uh, insure it and then they have to file it. It's, full, it's already digital now, I think. The information is then delivered to the National Road Office. But I have to visit them, sign something, then come to your place and then start again, right? So you will do that like I don't have to even leave my home or? It goes so far because we are utilizing truly the digital, let's call it a blockchain technology uh, possibilities, uh, saying that is self-sovereign identity in Liechtenstein, we have eid.le. Mm -hmm. So with that you are, you are, let's say, registered officially in the chain. And then, yes, you don't have to come to, to us anymore. Uh, we have agreements with insurance, that is what is planned, uh, with the dealers, with manufacturers, those guys who really want to get into the ecosystem. Once they are partner and are in there, then yes, you can transact all from home via a push of a button. You briefly mentioned the EID, the electronic uh, identity uh, that we have in Liechtenstein, uh, which is part of that concept that you get um, identified. And that's one of the missing uh, pieces we have in a, in a fully uh, decentralized token economy. So that's one of the missing pieces. Uh, but for Liechtenstein, actually, you think that uh, we can use the EID as a solution? From my perspective, uh, we can absolutely use it uh, for the blockchain technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is actually what we have planned for. And just to, uh, we are right now in the trial to use the EID also to create a digital driver license. And if everything goes well, in uh, half a year time, I don't want to lead out too far, but in a half a year time, you have an, addi uh, an addition that your driving license will be fully digital with EID. Since almost every citizen now has this uh, application uh, on his uh, mobile phone, you, instead of having certificates, you can also then have your driving license. Exactly. Cool. And we say analog equals digital. At least, and of course, it has to get into uh, the whole international law, but that is all underway and we are developing according to international standards. Today, there are five countries in the world. They have actually a digital driver license. One in Europe is Norway. And so we, we, look, uh, we have looked into what they've been doing and uh, we have a lot of experience from, from the uh, COVID certificate. So it's quite uh, simple to to really connect it and to make utilize, uh, utilization of the technology. That's very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to that because I don't uh, like these plastic cards to carry around all of these um, um, certificates actually in the, in the end. You already mentioned that blockchain is a technology. 
and quite a lot of people treat blockchain the same as cryptocurrency so they use these words uh, as they are the same which is not true and i think um, also you as a, a person who is uh, quite familiar with blockchain you have to explain quite a lot what is the difference can you describe the difference in very brief terms for the audience? What is the difference between blockchain and cryptocurrency? I think it's exactly what you say. People think they hear uh, blockchain and think cryptocurrency. So I call it blockchain equals cryptocurrency. It's not like that. And to make it worse, they put on that blockchain consumes a lot of energy. It's also not correct. It's correct for one application and it's cryptocurrency. As, as you ask for the difference, there are many, many other possibilities of utilizing blockchain technology. It is just, cryptocurrency is just one, so to speak, application. So I want to explain this in uh, quite uh, simple terms. Uh, this is about, first and foremost, peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interaction. So in the blockchain, we can interact peer-to-peer, -peer, from you to me and from me to you directly. No intermedi intermediary. The second one is really, we do it in a trustful ecosystem. It's like we described when you buy a car out there, it's, it's a complete system, it's not just one, one part of it. So the second one, it is trustful uh, ecosystem. And the third one, within that ecosystem and peer-to-peer, -peer, we can conduct all the uh, transactions through the technology. And that is what, ma uh, makes, it, uh, what makes it happen, uh, for instance, to then create a smart contract. If we do the transaction, we use smart contract technology who does the job. It says well, if A happens, then B will be ex executed. And by that, uh, we can really come to not only crypto, but to uh, through trustworthiness to complete token economy. So we, we deal with, with, we exchange. And my executive summary is actually, a blockchain is about transferring value. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very interesting. And a very good explanation, actually, it's a, that you say it's a transfer of value. So you said that you use blockchain and then you have to connect uh, quite a lot of parties that you can actually create this uh, fully ecosystem, as you said, like the insurance company. So we can expect more in your presentation, and we will put a link into the description of the mm -hmm. video, um, you also explained that uh, you will cover the full life cycle of a car. Uh, you briefly touched on uh, that I can register the car mm -hmm. and I have my insurance digitally, I have my driving license. Uh, what's, uh, what's next in the life cycle of a car you already thought about? Right. I have to say, uh, to uh, a little bit elaborate a little bit more, we uh, as uh, National Road Office, we are a part of a consortium which uh, uh, compromises or, or includes 26 partners actually. So this is a private public partnership where we have 26 uh, parties in it. So we have manufacturer, we have importers, we have dealers and uh, of course insurance and, and road company, post finance. Uh, Interlease, Autoscout, uh, name it, uh, AMAC, uh, Emil Frey, uh, actually uh, uh, the Federal Road Office. So the first and foremost, most important issue is that we have gathered in a, so to speak, digital commons. It's like a almint. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a commons where all these parties agree to develop together the standard of, of this uh, digital, eco uh, digital ecosystem. So in actual fact, this collaboration uh, results that we are not creating a solution for one partner only. It will be a solution for the, for, for the, for the complete ecosystem. So everybody can participate. Everybody can participate. You, are, you can become a member. It's called uh, Car Dossier Association. Can be Googled. Uh, it's officially registered. It's a non-profit organization. And of course, you have to apply and, and, and as, a, as a company. But then, for when you become a customer or you want to get into the system, of course, it will be given by the partners who are involved there. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question because given the fact that uh, in your career, I, I did a little bit of uh, research uh, for today. Uh, within your career, uh, you first of all wear multiple hats. 
uh, but you had to deal quite a lot with innovation. And I think uh, not talking about that specific use case, card dossiers now, uh, what do you think will the blockchain technology change uh, in the future? For me, a blockchain uh, will change uh, and revolutionize the way we conduct uh, business beyond recognition. And uh, beyond recognition in the sense of, we have already touched a little bit, we have some factors in it, which that is the reason why it will change it. The first one is we can deal peer to peer, from me to you. We don't need any intermediaries. The second one is really, we can do this very fast in a very trustful environment because it's time stamped, whatever transaction is done, it is verified. And it is also, uh, it is not at the central register, it is all decentralized data. So you, in inverted comma, own uh, your own data, in inverted comma. And that gives the power to, to, to uh, let's call it, buy, sell, trade, use, and, and doing it so fast. And I like one quote of actually uh, Barack Obama when, when he saw uh, blockchain is coming. And he, he simply said, well, uh, you can have your, your bank in the pocket. And that is, you know, that is the essence. For me, it's all about, uh, uh, let's call it, tr this transferring of value, but it is also to condensing processes to the absolute minimum that you can do it fast, 24-7, uh, uh, 365. So all around the clock, full power. And it's just also an, an issue of convenience and really, and really simplicity. And in the end, of course, taking out intermediaries, and that will be one of the things it will revolutionize. It will change completely new business models, but it will definitely lower also the costs, which is at the end of the day, a very important part. Yeah, that's beneficial for everybody in the end. Not for the intermediaries, short term, but uh, like on a global scale, that's beneficial. So we, we already talked a little bit about the token economy and that's the big picture Liechtenstein had in mind um, when they developed the Blockchain Act. And um, in your specific use case, uh, what part did the Blockchain Act uh, play uh, where at the, for, for the solution you recently uh, presented in Geneva? The Actually, I have to say the Blockchain Act uh, for us played a very important role. First and foremost, we are a governmental agency and in governmental agencies, you put a lot of trust. So what we do, it has to be trustful, it has to be safe and secure. Actually, the Blockchain Act of Liechtenstein has created this safe environment where by law, and you are Mr. <laughs> blockchain Law, so to speak, by, by the blockchain law, we have a, a, a legal certainty, and a legal certainty not only for Liechtenstein, but as Liechtenstein is a member of the European Economic Area, we have it full over full of the European Union. So that is that is one of the very very important part. But to have the trust for Liechtenstein and in the blockchain uh, law, what I have really to say, and which I find extremely powerful, is that the blockchain law is linked to the corporate law actually to do due diligence and is to the civil law. So all these three together, plus the dedicated blockchain law where you have, uh, I know as well, uh, input a lot and developed a lot for those laws. It's about trustful technology to generalize that, but to, to, in order to conduct business. What I think then really puts, you know, uh, the top of the cream, the cherry on the cream, you would say, is that we have the financial market authority of Liechtenstein. And I have seen they are very, very thorough to who is getting and can conduct business in the blockchain law, uh, which is another great asset for, for the trustfulness. Mm -hmm. And all together, by having that basis of Liechtenstein with this excellent, I would say, I call it the golden star, standard, mm -hmm. international standard of blockchain law, I believe, yeah, I strongly believe that it's the perfect base for a governmental agency to, to uh, tap into it and really utilize it. And that is what we, uh, is our strategy and we are, we are doing actually. Yes, and I think that it is really uh, crucial that for, first of all, like also our government agencies are making use of that uh, law, right? 
I mean, exactly. otherwise it's not only about the private sector. So uh, thank you very much for your time. I have one last question for you, and I'm asking this question all of my guests because um, the title of that format also te already tells you that uh, that is also about coffee. Uh, so what kind of coffee is your favorite coffee? Is it a special type, a special method how to brew coffee or? Right. I think the answer is a little bit more differentiated because... <laughs> That's a lawyer's <laughs> answer, actually. <laughs> okay, good, good. But the differentiation is it really depends on the time and place. That is the first one. Mm. Uh, but then to answer a little bit your question, uh, I love in the morning to drink actually a cafe latte, mm. a real nice cafe latte. And uh, for lunch, I like uh, to have an espresso, lunch or after lunch, just as we had it together too. <laughs> and you have excellent uh, coffee, and I know you are a true uh, gourmet of coffee. <laughs> But then I also say, it, this has not ended there, of course, I love a real cappuccino in a, from a barista in a mm. bar in Italy. Mm. Uh, that is, you know, and to top the whole thing, talking about coffee, From time to time, I truly like to brew or to make a true Irish coffee. Ah, and I, I, do, I, I could give you once my recipe or we could try it. Yeah, but yeah, sure. That is from time that. to time, <laughs> just in the evening, it's pretty cool and pretty nice too. The, the Swiss call it cafe mit Schuss. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is better than cafe mit Schuss. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much, Otto, Most for, welcome. for stopping my by pleasure. and for your time. And all the best for your project. I hope to see it live and I'm looking forward to, uh, to leave my driver license at home and using my app in the future. Thank, uh, thanks again for coming and hope to see you soon. Great pleasure. Thank you too.